What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled, as always, by the good folks at Nerd Tees, and uh, she's a little chilly in the in the Nerd Tees cup today because we're rocking a little cold brew because it is bloody well hot outside. Welcome to week nine of my weekly CFL pick show for the 2018 CFL regular season, and it is the second edition of CFL do's and don'ts. The only thing colder than my cold brew right now were my picks from week eight. Only two and two straight up. Now that does have us at 20 and 11 so far straight up on the season. Against the spread, one, two, three, four. I know it only three swings to strike out, but whatever. We're talking about a different sport. O oh and four against the spread. I missed them all. So 0-4 against the spread has us now back down to 15 and 16 against the spread on the season. Definitely not where we want to be, so we're going to be looking to rebound in a big bad way this week, even though there's only three games on the schedule. Over-under, I did manage to grab one, so I was only 1-3 and three on the over-under, but that does have me 18-13 and 13 over-under on the season. Quick update of the CFL standings in the East Division. Ottawa still leading at 4-3, and three, outscoring opponents by just a single point, 25-24. Hamilton in second place now 3-4, and four, just one game under 500, but outscoring opponents 26-23, to 23, certainly helped along by the Montreal game last week. Toronto 2-5, and five, picking up their second win of the season last week. Uh, being outscored by their opponents 31-20. to 20. Montreal pulling up the rear in the East Division and in the CFL as a whole. Only 1-6. and six, Now being outscored by a full 20 points on average. 35-15 to 15 in the wrong direction. In the West, Calgary still perfect. 7-0. and oh, Outscoring opponents 29-12. to 12, Still the class of the league. Edmonton now pulled into second place at 5-2 and two in seven games. Edmonton turning things around, certainly on the defensive side a little bit. Now outscoring opponents 28-24. to 24. Third place in the West is the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at 4-3. and three, Outscoring opponents 34-21, to 21, which is still the second biggest gap. Saskatchewan at 3-4 and four now, being outscored by opponents 25-22, to 22, and BC pulling up the rear in the West Division at 2-4, and four, being outscored by opponents 28-21. to 21. Like I mentioned, only a three-game slate in the CFL this week. We have the Edmonton Eskimos traveling to BC to take on the Lions. We've got Hamilton traveling to Winnipeg to take on the Blue Bombers, and Montreal hitting the road going to Ottawa to take on the Red Blacks. By the way, once again, you are going to hear my fan in the background, I'm sure, because the, you know, the camera picks up everything. So that is running because it's just too damn hot to not have it running. So, sorry. Let's start with that first game we mentioned, Edmonton traveling to BC to take on the Lions. We'll start with Edmonton, the visiting team, coming off of a 26-19 win over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders last week. Eskimos win that game after the fourth lead change of the second half. So this was a real back-and-forth football game. And they were the beneficiary of some really questionable play calling by Saskatchewan on their last drive. Like, you've got under 30 seconds left in the game, I believe it is. And you're throwing 10- and 6-yard little dump passes to your running back. So, like I mentioned, this is a do's and don'ts week. So for every team, we're going to have one do and one don't. We're going to get you out of here a little early this week. For the Edmonton Eskimos, do throw, throw, throw some more. Mike Riley and the Edmonton Eskimos lead the CFL in quarterback rating. I think it's like 95-something. The next closest is Calgary, somewhere in the high 80s. So they lead significantly in terms of QBR. They are playing a team that allows the third best QBR against, and Mike Riley so far this season has been crazy efficient and effective on passes 20 yards or more. He's about 50% in total between completions and incompletions, but that's like at least 5 or 6% higher than anybody else in the entire league. So they're crazy efficient on those deep passes. They got to throw the football, throw the football early, throw the football often. But if you're the Eskimos, don't forget to protect the bread and butter. Mike Riley took four sacks in that game last week. I'm sorry, against Saskatchewan. Charleston Hughes, of course, getting one of them. Also, shout out to Charleston Hughes for liking my tweet 
at him on Twitter about there being three things in life that are for sure, death, taxes, and Charleston Hughes sacking your quarterback. Thank you very much for actually giving that tweet some attention. Mike Riley took four sacks in that game last week. That doubles his total so far from the regular season. He had four going into that game, left that game with eight. I look at quarterbacks, especially franchise quarterbacks, especially quarterbacks that are just a little bit older. Mike Riley is certainly not old, but he's at least a little bit older. I look at them like professional wrestlers. A professional wrestler, I take everything back to pro wrestling, professional wrestler has something called a bump card. If you've got a franchise quarterback the caliber of Mike Riley, you want to keep his bump card as clean as humanly possible. They did not do that last week. Four sacks against Mike Riley, and it showed in his effectiveness. He was, I think, sub-50%, if I remember correctly. So, look, they'd only allowed him to be sacked four times up until that point, so this is literally like a first offense for the offensive line not really protecting him. We'll move to the BC Lions now, coming off of a 27-18 loss against the Calgary Stampeders. What a shock there. But... BC did outscore Calgary 15-10 to in the second half of that game. It just wasn't enough for them to overcome a really slow start. Pretty sure they only had like three points at halftime. For the BC Lions, do keep spreading the defense out. The BC Lions had five receivers in that Calgary game that had at least three catches, and they had three who had at least 50 yards. And they're not doing that against nobody. That's the Calgary Stampeders defense they did that against. That's the best defense in the entire CFL. So if they can do that against Calgary's defense, they should be able to find some holes against an Edmonton defense that is not on the same level and has struggled at times this season. They've kind of turned it around a little bit now, but they've struggled, especially in the early part of the season. But if you're the BC Lions, don't relax on second down. BC's defense in that Calgary game played unbelievably on first down. I'm going to hit you with a number here, and it's pretty damn incredible. On first down, the BC defense against Calgary allowed 1.9 yards per attempt. That's incredible. You average that out over every possession, every new set of downs, that's a second and eight. However, they were a literal dumpster fire on second down. On second down, they allowed 369 yards. That was 83% of Calgary's total yardage in the football game. They attained on second down. BC does not have a chance of beating a high-caliber elite team in the West, which Edmonton is, if they cannot make plays on second down. This is one of those football games where something is going to have to give. The Eskimos are 3-0 and against teams in the West, outscoring them 33-24. to That's a pretty damn big gap. It's two possessions. But BC, for their credit, is 2-0 and at home, and they're keeping the scores low, outscoring opponents 21-14. to Defense is playing incredibly well at home. Something's got to give. Unfortunately, I think what's going to give is BC's defense at home. Uh, I really like Edmonton in this game. I don't love them. Like, it's not like, oh, this is a, this is, there's no way they can lose this game. No, they can definitely lose this game if they don't protect Mike Riley. But I figure they learned their lesson from the game last week, a game that was closer than it probably should have been against Saskatchewan. They should have been able to beat them by more than that, I would think, especially with Zach Kalaros just coming back for his first game. I'm going to take Edmonton in this one. I think they're just the better football team. BC's definitely got a chance. It's a narrow path. They can do it, but I'm going to go Edmonton in this one. Lions are three and a half point dogs at home in this football game. The total is set at 54 points. And this is where, like, I, obviously I really struggled with the betting picks last week. What was I? One and, one and seven on the betting picks. So if you just stop listening at this point, I can't exactly blame you. But it's, it's more than a field goal. And that's my thing with this one. I think this is going to be an incredibly, incredibly close game. If memory serves me correctly, BC and Edmonton play each other tremendously close historically. I think I got to take the home dog there. It's three and a half points. It's just a little, just the tiniest margin too much for me. So let's actually go BC plus three and a half, hedge our bets a little bit. And it's a game that I actually think stays under the 54 point total. That's just too much for me with BC's defense that plays as well as it does at home this season. Let's go to Winnipeg now, Tiger Cats and Blue Bombers. We will start with Hamilton coming off of that monstrous win against Montreal in Johnny Manziel's debut. 50-11 to in that game. Hamilton's defense generating seven turnovers, 
including four interceptions on Johnny Manziel in his first start. For the Tiger Cats, do limit a great offense's opportunities. Winnipeg can put up points in bunches, quick strikes. They can do it on the ground. They can do it through the air. Hamilton needs to limit their opportunities with the football. Now, they've been doing that fairly consistently this season. They actually have the second best time of possession in the entire CFL on average, 32 minutes and 9 seconds. They have to win time of possession in this football game as far as I'm concerned. And it kind of ties into that if you're Hamilton, don't throw yourself out of the football game. We all know Jeremiah Masoli. 300-yard games, bingo, bango, right one after the other. Jeremiah Masoli threw two interceptions last week against Montreal. Jeremiah Masoli has eight picks in seven games. That's not good enough. I know their focus is in that pass game with the great wide receivers that they have and Jeremiah Masoli, who, again, putting up 300 games almost like it's nothing. They want to throw the ball, but they have to be very economical with how they handle their pass game. Speaking of Winnipeg, they are coming off of their second straight destruction of the Toronto Argonauts. This time, 40-14. to That game came in Week 7 rather than in Week 8. Winnipeg was on the bye last week. The defense bent in that game. We talked about the defense. The defense did bend. They gave up almost 400 yards against, and Toronto actually out-yardaged them in that game. But they were incredibly, incredibly opportunistic, generating seven turnovers off of the Argos. If you're the Blue Bombers, do dominate the defensive line of scrimmage. Winnipeg has the number three total run defense in the CFL, giving up under 88 yards. I believe it's, yeah, yeah, just under 88 rushing yards per game. So that's number three in the CFL. They're a very good run defense. They are also the number three pass rush in the CFL in terms of sacks generated, and they're going up against an offensive line that has allowed the second most sacks in the CFL. And if you're the Blue Bombers, don't lose your discipline. The Hamilton Tiger Cats take the third most penalties in the CFL. They will give you opportunities if you don't let them then take you and drag you into deep waters. The shove after the whistle, the turnaround, all of a sudden, it's incidental, it's offsetting penalties, and you take that advantage that they just handed you and you give it right back to them. I talked about Hamilton not really being a team that is focused on the run, but actually if you take a look at them statistically now, maybe due in no small part to that game against Montreal, but you look at them statistically, their run numbers have definitely come up. This is a game that could ultimately be decided on the ground. You're talking about two teams here that are now number one and number two in terms of yards per game and yards per carry in the CFL so far this season. Now, granted, Winnipeg is number one in both of those categories and Hamilton is number two, and Hamilton's run defense is like the worst run defense in the league. I'd be a little more inclined to take the Tiger Cats this week if the game was in Hamilton, I'm not going to lie, but where the game's in Winnipeg, Winnipeg has been pretty darn dominant this season. Really, when you look at like, you know, there might be four and three, but that four and three record is is kind of misleading. I'm going to take Winnipeg in this one, especially given that the game is in Winnipeg So let's take the Blue Bombers at home to beat Hamilton. Bombers come into this game as five and a half point favorites at home. Total for the game is the highest total of the three games this week, set at 57 and a half. I think in terms of the spread, five and a half points, this is probably the best spread of the week. Like that's a really, really, really close number. I am going to take Winnipeg with that one though. I'm going to take Winnipeg minus five and a half. That half point again, like the first game, kind of makes things a little dicey for me, but I'm willing to stick with that. Let's take the Blue Bombers minus the five and a half points. And once again, I think this is a game that stays under the point total, 57 and a half. You got Hamilton. Hamilton's the best scoring defense in the East. Winnipeg is the second best scoring defense in the West. It's two pretty good defenses. Winnipeg can certainly score a lot of points, But I just, I don't know. I just don't see this game going over. So let's stick under that big number of 57 and a half. And before we get into our last game of the week, we're going to take a second to plug our good friends at Nerd Tees, nerdtees.ca, promo code BWFINEST, going to save you 15% at checkout, free shipping on any order in Canada, over 50 bucks. If you're an American, obviously you get the great conversion right now in the U.S. dollar. Today's blend is strawberry power-up, and like I mentioned, I'm doing this sucker as a cold brew because it's just too damn hot. And uh, as a cold brew, this is damn good. 
Find yourself something to love, folks. Find a loved one something to love. You'll do it on nerdtease.ca. Promo code BWFINEST, 15% off. Our last game takes us to Ottawa, a battle of best in the East versus worst in the East. Ottawa playing host to the Montreal Alouettes. We'll start with Montreal because why not start with the tire fire? Obviously coming off of that 50-11 to loss against Hamilton, Johnny Manziel's debut. And, you know, when your two quarterbacks combine combine to throw about 48% with a long pass completion of only 31 yards... It was probably a bad day. For the Montreal Alouettes, do win on first down. Yeah, do win in general, but no, do win on first down and on the ground. These are two areas that I legitimately think the Alouettes can win in this football game. On first down in that game against Hamilton last week, despite the fact that they got absolutely blown out, they did win on first down in terms of yards per attempt. Montreal had 6.3 yards per attempt on first down. That's pretty good. Set yourself up in a manageable second and four. Like, that's a pretty good, you know, that's really not that bad on first down. So 6.3 yards per attempt. Hamilton only did 4.5 in that game. Ottawa, in their game last week, the loss to Toronto, they did 5.8. But between the three teams, Montreal had the best yards per attempt. And same deal on the ground. Despite the fact that they got blown out, they did have a really good game on the ground. 7.7 yards per carry on the ground. Hamilton only had 6.5. That's at least close. Ottawa only had 2.4 yards per carry. And it kind of ties into it a little bit. But if you're Montreal, don't force Johnny Manziel to have to win the game for you. I mean, obviously, look, I was excited that he was getting his first start. Most people in the CFL were excited that he was going to get his first start. But it became very clear very early in that football game, he needs another week or two to adjust and to be brought up to speed into Montreal's system. Looks like they rushed him in a little too quickly. Although, it's important to note that by rule... Johnny Manziel's first pass in the CFL was no longer an interception because that basically that pitch that he had on his very first play that went for negative five yards, technically the ball went forward, so technically it counts as a forward pass. So his first pass in the CFL went for negative five yards, but at least it wasn't an interception. That was his second one. We'll go to the red-black side here now to close this out before we get into the prediction for the game. Ottawa coming off of a really disheartening loss against Toronto, 42-41. to What a monster scoring game that was, but Ottawa led that game. Ottawa was in such control of that game. They led the game 28-7 to at the half. If you're the Ottawa Red Blacks, do play with a little goddamn discipline. Over Ottawa's last three games, so it's the last three weeks... They've taken 29 penalties for 298 penalty yards. And on the defense, 13 for 138. So about half of the penalties and a little under half the penalty yardage coming on the defense. Play with a little friggin' discipline, especially when you don't have the football. And if you're the Red Blacks, don't do that fourth quarter thing again. In the fourth quarter, they allowed Bethel Thompson to go 10 of 16 for 100 yards and three touchdowns. McLeod Bethel Thompson won Toronto that game last week. But not really, because Ottawa just plain blew it. When you look at it on paper, a matchup of the best team in a division versus the worst team in a division is, is trap game city. On paper. Um, Ottawa's going to win this football game. They, they're going to rebound from that. Uh, again, it, just a uh, horrible way to lose that football game. I think they definitely win this game. I can't see them blowing back-to-back games, back-to-back weeks against the two worst teams in the division. So, I mean, you know, we'll have to go with that. We're going to take Ottawa for sure, especially where it's in Ottawa, to win this game. Ottawa beats Montreal in Ottawa. Ottawa, however, is favored by 14 points. And I'm sorry, I ain't taking that. I could see this being like a 10-point win, something like that. Some Two possessions, comfortable, but 14 points... I'm not taking that against a team that allowed that to happen to them in the second half and especially in the fourth quarter just last week. Total in the game is 49.5 points and I still think the total stays under. Being how I don't think that Ottawa is going to absolutely blow them out. I mean, 20-10 to 
25 to 15. 25 to 15, I think, is actually a score that you could certainly see in this football game or 24 or 50 or whatever. I do think the total stays under the 49 and a half, so I'm, I'm under on all three games this week, and that's a low number, but I'm still going to stick with the under. All right, folks, that is going to do it for the week nine games in the CFL. Let's go over the picks here with you one more time. In BC, I like the Edmonton Eskimos to come in and hang a loss on the Lions, but I will take BC plus three and a half in that game in a game that stays under 54. I like Winnipeg at home to beat the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I also like Winnipeg to cover minus five and a half in that game, in a game that stays under the biggest total of the week, 57 and a half. I'm hedging my bets and going Montreal plus 14 against the spread. Just too many points for me for a team that allowed what happened last week to happen in a game that still stays under 49 and a half points. There you go, folks. Week 9 is in the books. That's it for me. Justin Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube. Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. Enjoy the games in Week 9. We're getting close to the halfway mark of the CFL regular season. As you can see, we're going to be running these bad boys in tandem. NFL Tuesday, CFL Wednesday. I'm loving doing the CFL show. I'm glad you guys are loving the CFL show as well. Enjoy the games in Week 9. See you again in Week 10.